In this video, I'm going to show you how you can cut off your line series based on a point of view selection. So for example, you're reporting June data and you want your line series to just show data until June and exclude future months. This is the trick you need to do. Otherwise your chart is going to look like this instead of this. This is the data set that we have and what we're going to do first is to insert a drop down for this. So I'm going to go to data, data validation, list, and as my source, that's going to be the months right here. Okay, so that's basically going to define the point of view. It could also be the case that this data is being directly retrieved from a system based on this point of view, right? But what could happen is that even if you are retrieving March, it could be that you have some dummy or test data in the system that pop up in your Excel spreadsheet. What you wanna do is to make sure that even if data show up here, that that's not gonna get shown in your line chart. So basically you're going to cut off the line series based on this selection for the month. Now to do that, we need to add a data preparation table. We have to have an additional section that we prepare and that the chart that we're going to create is going to refer to this section. We do need that for actuals, but we don't need it for budget because that's fixed. That's always going to show the 12 months. For the header, I'm going to put actual. Now I need to come up with a formula that only shows data until this month here. If you're lucky, these could be formatted as months. So you could get the month number and you could work with that. But in this example, this is just text. So we have to work with this. What I could do is first of all, find out where June is. I could do that with the match function because that's going to return the number and I can actually use that as my month number. If I match this, so let's just fix that. And my lookup array, where am I looking this up? Well, that's going to be here. I'm going to fix that as well. And I'm looking for an exact match. Number I get is six. If I change that to me, that's five. With this information, I can tell the month. But now what I need to do is to compare this to this number. So I need to somehow convert this to a number and say, is this number less than or equal to this? Because if you are less than or equal, then I want this number. Otherwise, I don't want a number. I do need an if because I'm comparing something to something else. But now I need to translate this to a number. So which formulas can help me get numbers out of these? In this case, I'm going to use count A and I'm going to count this with itself. But I'm going to fix the first cell reference so that when I pull this down, the range is going to get bigger. If this now is less than or equal to this, then it should give me this number back. Otherwise, let's say it should give me nothing back. Okay, so I'm gonna push this down. Now that cut it off in June, which looks good. Switch to July, that cuts it off in July. Okay, so that seems to work. As a first step, let's just go and insert that chart. So I'm gonna highlight this, hold down control, and I want both of these in there, so I'm going to highlight these two. Insert a line series. That's the problem that we get. Why do we get this? Well, we get it because we're writing a formula and we're saying return nothing. And a null text string in a formula for Excel here is a zero. So it crashes our line to zero. If I didn't have 
formulas here. So just check this out. If I highlight this and press delete, it cuts my line. But I can't do that all the time because that's going to be a very manual process. So to avoid the line from crashing, the trick is to add a specific error to this cell and that's the NA function. Because it's a function, you need to open and close brackets. And when I click that and send this down, it just doesn't plot those points. So basically it cuts off my series right here. Let's keep on optimizing this chart by adding the data labels instead of using the Excel legend right at the end of the series. Budget is going to be simple because that's always 12 months. So we can actually just activate the last point here. So I'm going to click, click, right mouse click. And only for this last point, I'm going to add the data label for it. Okay. So let me just pull this in to give it some breathing space. Now only for this data label. So click, click again. We're going to use the series name instead of the value. Okay. So that's basically attached to the position of the last point. No matter where this one goes, if it goes up to 4,000, it's going to move up with it. Okay. I'm just going to press control Z to go back. We can't do that for actual because it's not going to work properly. Why? Let's test it. I'm going to add the data label. I'm going to click, click. And only for this data label, I'm going to say show the series name and not show this. Okay. So now it looks great, right? But next month is going to be July that I need to report. And that's just going to go over it. And then it's August and this is going to stay behind. So it's not going to move with it. It's static. So what I want is to have a moving label because I have something that's moving here. That means I need to add a new series to my chart that controls the position of the label. So I'm going to call this actual, let's say label. Now this is going to be a whole new series. And what we want this series to do is to plot one point and that point is going to be month that we select right here. So if I select June, I want to see this number. I need numbers because I can only bring numbers to charts. Even though I want to show a label later on, I still need to bring a number inside the chart. But that's going to be a very simple if formula in this case. All I have to check is, is this month that the user selects, I'm going to press F4, is this equal to this month? If it is equal to this month, then it should give this value back. Otherwise, it should give NA back. Okay, because I want to avoid that crashing line again here. So I go with the NA error. Okay, so now I just get the month that the user selects here. So now what I'm going to do is to add this series to here. So I'll just go right mouse click, select data, add, let's give it actual label. Now series values, those are going to be these. Okay, so it plotted just one point. I can't see it right now. So I can go here and find it. And for this whole data series, so no double clicking because that's just going to be the data point for this entire data series here, I'm going to add the data labels for it. Okay. And while I'm here, let's just go to more options from the label options. Let's plot it on the right hand side. And what I can do again is to show the series name. But what I need to do is to change this to actual. Instead of calling this actual, I'm going to change this to something dynamic and say actual until space quotation mark. And I'm going to combine it with this month and press enter. 
Okay, so actually until July, what I'm going to do is connect the chart title with a formula to this cell here. Okay, so when I change the selection, I see actual until September, that looks good. Now I don't need this, I can delete it. Okay, in the chart series names, I can, it always updates to show that series, so I can tell, okay, this is basically this series and my series actual is where I have the label sitting. That's how you can create a line series based on a point of view selection here. And don't forget the NA function if you want to cut off your line series and you want to avoid crashing lines. In my last seminar, someone asked me how we could hide the NAs from view so that they don't see it in the report. Well, all you have to do is this. Just highlight the area, go to Home, Conditional Formatting, and add a new rule. The rule that we're going to pick is to format only cells that contain. Now, instead of formatting only cells with a certain cell value, we're going to click on this drop down and format the errors. And the way we're going to format them is to give them the same font color as the background color. So if your background is white, you'd want to give it a white font color. Now in this case, my background is a very light gray. So I'm going to pick the same gray for the font. And I think it's this one. Okay, and that's it. And now they're hidden from view. So even if we change this point of view, let's go to September. Works great. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you like these type of videos, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you can get notifications when new videos like this one come out.